Well, good morning. How are you all today? Welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I am Steve Smith. This one's going to be a little bit different than what I usually put out because of something that just occurred to me yesterday. And I'm going to talk about uh, the importance of knowing how to or learning how to fight and uh, knowing how to or learning how to love. Yeah, I know. Where did that come from, right? Where did that come from in a preparedness video? Well, we were down at Silver Dollar City yesterday and standing in line to go to the, uh, uh, to take a ride on their, their, their Christmas sing-along train. And, uh, and Kelly uh, touched me on the arm and she says, hey, she just, she just got a, a notice uh, from a Facebook uh, group of, of friends. She said, today would have been Jim's 87th birthday. And you know, it had slipped my mind. Now, who she's talking about is one of my very dearest friends. Uh, some of you have maybe heard me mention him before. His name was Jim Harrison. He was one of the legends of, uh, of martial arts, uh, of, of the old blood and guts, uh, real hammer, uh, full contact karate back in the 60s and 70s. He was the uh, the founder and creator of Bushido Khan, uh, Ronin Jutsu, and Sakura Warrior Arts, which included not just fighting but uh, but survival. There's stories, some stories that I can't tell about him, but uh, they'd blow your mind. Uh, he 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 was called the closest thing to a a samurai that the modern world, the 20th century, can produce and was called by uh, Bruce Lee uh, who said he wasn't really afraid of anybody but the last two people that he'd ever want to fight were uh, Jim Harrison and Mike Stone. Jim was a frightening person to, to many people. I'll, I'll show you. I just came across this picture. Here's a picture of, of Jim and I. Uh, let's see, where are you there? Is that... I don't know. I don't know if that's coming up. Uh, I think that was taken. Oh, yeah, look at my short hair. Uh, at the Living Legends get-together down in Dallas. Uh, I think it was also part of Chuck Norris's birthday party. Uh, like in 2000 or something like that. Um, and uh, uh, <clears throat> Jim was a, a, a frightening person to, to many who didn't know him. And, uh, and he was one of the best teachers, one of the best trainers uh, that there was out there. A friend of mine came by a couple of weeks ago, also one of, one of Jim's senior black belts. Uh, I didn't come up under Jim's system. Uh, I, I'm only the fifth person, I believe, that he ever conferred an associates uh, to Bushido Khan to, and that was a recognition of, of my system. Uh, but this, this friend of mine came by, who's one of his senior black belts and a real butt kicker himself. Well, an, an, another one who was one of the most feared fighters in his day on, on the circuit. And we were just sitting talking, and uh, Jim came up. I mean, the, the subject of Jim came up, <clears throat> and he said, uh, we were talking about, you know, how, how we, the gym we knew. And, uh, and my buddy said, you know, so many people were afraid of him. They, they didn't realize how, how nice he really was and how, how caring he really was and how loving he really was. And I said, you know, that's the truth. They couldn't see through their fear of him to see the real man. And, and he said, well, I never thought about it that way, but that's exactly right. In, in preparedness and, uh, and survival and, and, you know, you, you, all the YouTube channels, people make a great deal about toughness, about, uh, oh, you know, fighting and, and gunfighting, tough talk, tough talk, a lot, of, a lot of tough talk out there. A lot of them from people who never done it, to be to be real honest, and, and those who have can can pick out those who haven't and just 
talk like they have. A lot more talkers than have done it. Um, I call them wannabes, but never worse. And this tends to, I think, sway the, the, the proper attention and what's needed for, for not just living a full life today, but in really preparing to live a good life after whatever happens, happens. Uh, Jim Harrison, uh, I may have said this before, is one that uh, one of very few men that I consider really a spirit brother. He and I shared many, many, uh, many things in our lives um, that that made us have an affinity with one another. And while other people would describe him as terrifying, scary. I always, I always um, describe him as, well, he was one of the greatest gentlemen I've ever known. One of the most ferocious when it came to fighting. And, and, and Jim did a real world, not just in the ring. And Jim had, had plenty of experience, real world experience, where, which is where he and I gained our affinity. Um, he was one of the kindest people I've ever known. He was one of the gentlest people I've ever known, unless somebody crossed him. He was one of the most courteous men. He was the epitome of the word gentleman. And you know, in, in preparedness, that kind of behavior is, is kind of denigrated. Uh, that this idea that gruffness and bluff uh, well, not well. Yes, yeah, sometimes it is a bluff, but, but gruffness and just saying it like it is, and I just tell you, rah, 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 that's held up, and, and really that's rudeness, and it's the inability to get along with the world around you, um, and 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 that is going to work against you, uh, not only in dealing with other people, but in being the best you can be and, and, and being the best for those around you and providing not just safety and security for those who depend on you, but a loving life, a loving family, a loving group, a loving wh wh whatever. Lo love is the, the greatest, in my opinion, it's the strongest motivator there is. It's, it's far, far more than fear. Uh, and that's, that's where Jim Harrison shined. And he was an example to so many people. It's uh, those who came up under him. And, and, and Jim and I didn't know each other until we were both well advanced in, in, in our, our lives. But for those he, he was able to mentor through through the many, many years that he taught and, and, and trained fighters and, and all, uh, he had just an exceptional impact on them. And he did that well, from high expectations, certainly. Uh, he, he, he never compromised on the expectations. It was tough to get a Bushida Khan black belt. It was, I mean, when somebody says, Bashida Khan black belt. That, 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 that says it all. You don't get one of those from Jim Harrison uh, unless you did the things. And, and his ability to mentor, to lead, to, to provide for the needs of the people who depended on him came out of his very deep love. And, and that would be very surprising for many, many people to hear. Many. Because it just doesn't fit in with this tough, gruff type of thing that we seem to, uh, to hold up as something special nowadays. And, and those kinds of things are only held up by people with no experience. 
you know, it's just, people who have really done things don't act like that. And Jim was proof. So in a way, this has kind of been just a, a moment for me to reflect on my friend. Um, but also to share the example that he, that he left and say, yes, it's important to know how to fight. It's more important to know how to love. Because you're going to be called on to love far more often than you're ever called on to fight. Okay. I might put something up for anybody who's interested. I think there's a, a, uh, I think there's a video out there somewhere. Uh, it was, it was something I wasn't able to go to. Um, but it was a few years back when, uh, and, and, uh, Chuck Norris was introducing Jim at, at a, at a get together. If I can find it, I'll put it up on the Patreon channel. Um, for anybody who's, who's interested, get a, get a glimpse of Jim Harrison, look into him. He, he wrote the, uh, um, some acknowledgements, some, some, some things in the front matter of my first three books before he passed. And, uh, just think about that. Think about that. There's far too, far too much in the preparedness world of, of, of keeping distance from people. And, and you will not only shortchange them of what you can give, which is your responsibility. I know a lot of people don't think it's your responsibility to do what you can. But it'll shortchange the person who's keeping themselves back, too. They, they will live a shell of a life that they could have if they won't simply get out there and open themselves up and give themselves in love. Okay, I know this has been a different one. Remember, we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. Don't prepare out of fear. Prepare out of responsibility and love. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.